And you also like to get out of politics and talk about sort of the real world. And, and, and case in point is the cover story you did on the case against overparenting. You and I have talked about yeah. that, uh, that cover story. And uh, it's an area of interest for me because I've always sort of been mesmerized by this whole conversation and, and parents living vicariously and being helicopter parents and, you know, just doing almost too much. And you wrote this story. Was this the uh, was this the biggest selling time or something? Didn't it do it huge was, numbers? It it sold very well, I think, and it, it became sort of viral because it was the classic story that people emailed to each other because this is the conversation that we all have, right? Right. It's, you know, when do we back off and when do we move in and when do you pick up the phone and call your kid's teacher? And, and if you don't, if you sort of unilaterally disarm, are you not serving your child well? It's I know so many parents who are honestly, in a well-meaning way, wrestling with this. And most of us feel like we're getting the balance wrong. And, right. And How can you give a child self-esteem without all, with, and also teach him or her to accept disappointment and learn resilience? Well, this is what teachers kept coming back to, is that, is that we understand that parents don't want their children to fail. That's totally normal. But we see how damaging it is to kids who are never allowed to trip and fall and pick themselves up. Mm -hmm. And you just, we have to create a situation where that is possible for them. A lot of teachers thanked you for this article, oh, yes. didn't they? Uh, it, Did it was a lot a of little... parents get, cr you know, crank call you and say? <laughs> no, they, oh, there was a little tricky to step foot in my daughter's school because I was sort of, you know, like, like this. But most parents, it was very funny. They were sort of sheepish and they rolled their eyes and they said, yeah, that was me. I know, you know, I'm a, I'm a part Sikorsky. You know, yeah. <laughs> so that, um, you know, I think we all recognize, I mean, I'm writing about myself. I'm writing about all of us. We recognize this tendency in ourselves. And, and again, trying to get the balance right is the challenge. So I was trying to, in a way, give permi people permission to back off a little and, and not feel like they have to put their children in 50 activities and hover over everything and, and rewrite their science projects for them. And, right. And, and as you know, you know, this is, this has been, uh, this topic has gained popularity. I have talked about in speeches with a woman from San Diego who wrote The Me Generation about kind of giving kids so much self-esteem that, that it's just over the top. You know, everybody wins a trophy on the right. soccer team. You know, they, it's not really teaching them that life is sometimes unfair. But then George Will, I think, recently wrote about it. Did yeah. you read that piece that George Will wrote, kind of about overindulging kids? And... I think it's in in the air. And I think the interesting thing that it, it, it falls into now, I don't know if you saw the, the Pew Center survey about the millennial generation. That's yes. 18 to 29-year-olds. And It was and, upsetting and worrisome. Well, I was fascinated by it because on the one hand, these kids are facing the worst economic climate of any of the last four generations. And yet I mean, they're so optimistic. And they're really optimistic. And so you think, okay, I guess it's good that they're so hopeful. I mean, it's good for the young amongst us to, you know, to... Not to be cynical. Not be <laughs> cynical. But you also wonder how much of this is unrealistic expectations on their part or that they've been too sheltered from the harsh reality that they're facing. And do they have, most importantly, do they have the resilience that they're going to need in order to cope with what is clearly going to be a challenging environment for kids coming out of school now for the, however many years going forward. Are they tough enough for it? 